Hey there, Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan. This is a BR9 Super Legacy with four wheel drive and 2.5 liter turbocharged engine. This is our first BR9 that we bought from auction here in Japan, and so it's my first time seeing one of them. I've been a huge fan of the Legacy since basically the first generation. And it's interesting for me to see what changes each year. Legacies a lot of time kept feeling very similar to one another. This one's probably the biggest change with a, uh, a taller waistline compared to all of the previous generations and uh, more modern styling, larger interior. I think just larger overall, higher roof. I'm not sure exactly how it drives, but I've been, I, I would be very curious to know. The 2.5 liter turbo engine, because it's a bigger engine than the previous versions, probably it has more low-end torque than the uh, previous ones. I really don't know that much else. It is a pretty large intercooler. That's interesting to see. Now the engine doesn't have any problems. Coolant and oil are both okay. No signs of any rust or anything. This liner is very thin and it's coming down. And it's been taped back up by somebody at some point, but it's ripped here. Yeah, it's basically just like a paper. Now usually it's more like some sort of a foam thing to insulate the sound that comes from the engine room. And then that's a duct that goes into the intercooler. Okay, close that up, give you a quick look at the car, then I'll go over the auction inspection sheet quickly for you. Then we'll do a once around and then interior. I will come back to this, I just want to mention that it is a 2009 2.5 GT turbo. push button. I don't know about other people. Push buttons when they came in, everybody wanted them because they were so cool. I prefer the feeling of turning a key with my hands. Maybe it's just me being old school. Okay, so a Legacy Touring Wagon 2.5 GT S package. I don't know what the S package is, but it might have something to do with the Bilstein suspension that it has. I'm not sure. Auction Raid 4, interior B, has leather. Actually, it's not real leather. I don't think it is, at least. Uh, alloy wheels, power steering, power windows, and airbag. 8452 kilometers for 2009. It's probably medium to high. And then if it's medium to high but still 88,000, that means a lot more life's left in the vehicle, but you can get it for pretty cheap compared to other ones. Legacies of all generations were very, very popular here in Japan, and so there's a lot of, especially for one that's about 10 years old, there's a lot of competition, which means low prices at auctions. The body's pretty clean all the way around. All of these are very minor marks, and so the body is one of the main uh, great parts about this one. The right side electric folding door mirror doesn't fold. That's over there. This one does. That one doesn't. The monitor is stuck on the Subaru mark. Driver's seat has a five centimeter rip, and it's weird. It's like a half rip. The fabric underneath is not ripped, but the, the, the top is kind of peeling off. I'll show you when we get there. Headlights are cloudy. Underside surface rust. That's not something I wouldn't worry about. Especially like Subarus don't tend to rust that much compared to other makes. LA wheel is scratched and very scratches and dents. Okay, so let's do the once around here. Okay, so that's full time four wheel drive. They call it symmetrical all wheel drive because the boxer engines are like uh, the way that the output shafts work. You don't have to have them offset. And so Subaru is like trying to sell it as like because they're not offset, this is a good thing. I challenge anyone to actually tell me if the Subarus are better than any other four-wheel drive car. I would doubt it. They use a uh, viscous LSD in the middle too, which if you're actually doing sports car racing, you're probably gonna wear out pretty quickly. Okay. I think it looks fine in this silver. It's got a nice high mica content in it. Headlights are faded. Let's see here. There's a rock chip on the hood here that is rusting a little bit. Okay, functional hood scoop. Pretty large mirrors, for me that's a big deal. I really hate small mirrors with poor visibility. Okay. If you look down the side panels, no issues. Clean as a whistle, very nice. Go to the back here. Oh, I just noticed that the Subaru mark is peeling there. 
Okay, so the floor of the trunk is up higher than the previous generations by probably a good inch, maybe. And it kind of feels like you don't get any more room inside here despite what looks like a bigger vehicle. I don't actually know the dimensions of it. There's this, as per normal, and wouldn't be a Subaru without having more stuff. What's this? I don't even know how that works. It just goes like that? That's really weird. Yeah, it has these little grippy things that just kind of sit on it. Strange. Uh, no doggy net, though. There's a place for your stuff. Tie down straps or hooks in here. And uh, handles to throw the seats down. Let's try one. Go. And they work. And you get more room in the back seat, for sure, because on previous generations, the seat would hit the back of the seat when the front seat is in the position that I usually use. So let's have a quick look at that. So this seat right now is in my position. With most cars, I put it in the full back position. And then these seats, you can also recline to varying levels. You can see this is as reclined as it gets, and that is as upright as it gets. Okay, sit in here, excuse my sniffles, yeah, more leg room, and the seat is kind of concave, and so it gives you a lot of room there, it's probably about uh, two and a half, three inches, maybe three inches, AC vents in the back, that's nice to have, seats have a lot of padding in them compared to previous ones, and so maybe that's something Subaru wanted to improve, I never thought the back seats were bad on a legacy. The dashboard is a lot more modern than the previous generation. I always thought that the previous generation and the generation before that didn't really make much improvements over the second gen. So the first gen felt modern, second gen felt modern, and then third and fourth kind of felt like putting, like uh, taking the same underneath, trying to make it look better, but it still kind of felt a bit old by then. I think this is nice, like a fake leather look. Uh, fake carbon fiber <laughs> but it works I mean otherwise it's just going to be a plastic that has some other design on it might as well look like a carbon fiber it's not that bad if you look at it okay so these seats let me show you the rip so right here and then if you look in here oh yeah it is leather huh Okay, well, I was wrong. Whoops. There, it's a, it's a half leather with this material. I don't have experience with a lot of these. So I don't know if this is a good material in terms of wear, but the leather, that's weird. Maybe someone had something sharp in their pants and poked it. Leather's usually not a material that rips very easily. One thing I don't like, check this out, it has an e-brake push button. I guess they're trying to be like a BMW and Mercedes-Benz. I don't like it. I want a Yanker on here, like all of the previous Legacies. Now it does have an automatic transmission and paddle shifts, and so you can still drive it a little bit sporty, uh, but they don't let you do the e-brake slides because that would be an odd way to do an e-brake slide. Okay, gauges do a cool little dance. Let me show you. Ooh. Okay, and there's a weird substance on here. And I want that to stop digging. But I didn't want to start the engine. See, if I had a key, I would have not done that. I just wanted it to stop dinging. Usually you take the key out to do that, but there's no key to take out. Maybe it's because the door was open? I don't know. It also dings when the seatbelt, like if it notices that you're going without putting a seatbelt on, which is a bit annoying when I'm just pulling them out of the lot there. I, like I know I'm not wearing a seatbelt. Okay. Um, dual zone climate control here so you get your different uh, temperatures left and right if you want Let's see my wife loves that i don't like it for some reason i ocd about that i want it to be the same temperatures left and right cigarette lighter adapter in there but no ashtray i have a place for two cups plus i think you can take this out okay scratch there and uh, no bed smells inside, high plush content on the floor mats. And uh, no cracks on the dashboard, we're good. 
The seats are a little bit noisy when you get out. Okay. So that is the BR9 Legacy. My first time. Alright, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. But otherwise, thank you so much everybody for watching. And have a nice day.